second run since the marathon. Just a little bit of a, a I'm just gonna call this a little warm up or recovery run or whatever. Try not to go too hard, not hard at all actually. Um, ran a mile at about a 730 minute pace, seven minute 30 second pace yesterday on the treadmill. And then I did squats and leg curls and worked out and uh, I was feeling it, it was hard. So I'm still feeling that fatigue. Even right now, it's a, this is a struggle. And I'm just gonna do a mile, a little bit of a leg mover, quick cool down or recovery run just to get the legs moving and help them uh, help them get moving and loose. So just a quick, easy mile lap to uh, get the legs moving, get this recovery started. Next. Next race is coming up soon. I'm thinking about doing a 10K here on the 2nd of November, which is only like two weeks away. So hopefully I'm recovered in time to do that. I think it'll be really fun. I'm gonna push me to keep running. So just doing this little run. Here's a tree. Hey guys, Team Natty here back with another video. And today we're gonna to talk about my marathon, how it went, what happened, what I think uh, could have gone better, what I think I did well in, and just an all around synopsis of that. So to start off with the marathon, I didn't get much sleep the night before. I was kind of running around trying to get my GoPro set, trying to get everything together and all my gear. I did pack up, I had everything ready, but it just seemed like all these problems were arising and then I had to take out the trash and I had to get this GoPro setup that I bought and the battery that was shipped with it was horrible so that I ran to Walmart and got a new battery. Did I, ran, I ran to Walmart twice. I ran to Walmart to get something and then I ran to Walmart again to get a new battery because it like I had it on the charger all day, it just wasn't working. So all those things came together. I probably only got five hours of sleep. Woke up the next morning, ate a big breakfast, like I had a big bowl of oats, banana, stuff like that. I got all my stuff together and then we left. Got there very early, it was really brisk and chilly. Rubbed biofreeze on my legs and kind of just, you know, walked our way over the, uh, to where the gear check was and the restrooms. I probably used the restroom twice before I started my race. Um, so I used it once before I gear checked my stuff in. And after that, um, and which is where I snuck the ring into my pocket, I went to the corrals. Uh, say goodbye to Taylor, went to the corral, and then I uh, used the restroom again while waiting in the corral, came out, got in line, and then we started and we're off, and it felt really nice. I was trying to keep myself contained to make sure that I didn't like go overboard and just blow my start like I did with the half marathon, but basically I um, ended up, you know, I think I ran my first mile at like a, like I saw my watch said nine, and I was like, well, that uh, for like when I first started running, I was like, I could pick up the pace a little bit. So then, like my first marathon or first mile was like an eight sixteen or something like that, not like crazy fast, like, but faster than I wanted to go. And I knew I was like, uh, I don't think I should be going this fast. And then mile two and mile three came at like eight oh nine and eight sixteen again. I was like, ooh, definitely going too quick for this for me right now, uh, at least at what I thought I was capable of. Mile three, went and used the restroom again, just like ran in real quick, used it, hand sanitizer, boom, ran out. Um, then I, you saw me record at mile six if you watched the video. Uh, then the miles just kinda kept coming. Pretty soon, I'm at the halfway mark. Uh, it was very exciting, lots of people, a lot of good scenes, you know, tapping the signs, giving people high fives, giving the kids high fives. Um, now pretty soon I'm at the half marathon mark already and I've ran my half marathon in the same time that I ran my actual half marathon. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going way too quick. So I knew it, I knew it was coming, but I still felt really good. I was just like floating, just like I'm just gonna keep it up. Uh, mile 15, mile 16, well I was talking to this guy and it's like, well this is where it gets lonely, this is where it gets lonely and quiet. And uh, so separate from the group, kept running. Uh, I was doing Gatorade and water like alternating every, I didn't do anything until mile two, and then I alternated Gatorade and water every mile. Sometimes I would get Gator, I would get both Gatorade and water, but I was like trying to get water every stop, and then Gatorade every other stop. 
I uh, had stuff on me, so I ate some of that. Like, I think I got goo at mile seven, and I waited till um, mile nine. I waited till my watch said an hour and 15 minutes, because I know at like an hour and 20 minutes, or an hour and a half is when you start hitting zero on the glycogen. So I waited until an hour and 15 minutes, took the goo, then I waited until like the half marathon point. A little bit after that, I, 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 I uh, had some energy chews from Stinger, which I really like. Um, and then, you know, proceed to keep going. I think I ate a stinger waffle while I was in the corral before I even started the race, just for more sugar in my body. But kept it going, kept the run going. Mile 15, I started slowing down a little bit and I was like, just, I could, I was feeling it just a little. My, the top of my left foot was kind of cramping up. It was interesting. I've never had that problem happen in any of my running training. So I was curling my toes and then taking steps, you know, every once in a while with my toes curled to kind of stretch out the top muscle and keep it from cramping up. Uh, and that eventually left me, but so I did that. That was a weird issue. Didn't have any Achilles tendon issues, which is nice. I'm very surprised. Um, so just the foot issue was the only thing hindering me at that point. Uh, managed to get through that. Coming up, mile 20, I still felt really good. Uh, was slowing down a little bit, you know, obviously, I, I like I said, I knew I was going too fast, but I was hitting like 8.30 something every mile, and, and, then, and then eventually like 8.40, but I was like still within that under four hour pace. I think I was set for 3.53. Well, I'm coming up in mile 22, and all of a sudden, it's like, if you've ever had a ringing in your ears, like that's how it felt, but in my quads, and it felt like a ringing in my quads, and it eventually just like got to a point where it stung and then it felt like someone was ripping them from my hips and my knees and it was like the worst pain I've ever experienced in my quads and it halted, I like kept trying to push through it and it was slowing down immensely and all of a sudden the four hour pace group just passes me and I just halt to a stop and it, I had to like, I literally couldn't even walk. It wasn't like a, just like slow down to a walk. It was like a full on stop. I think I had sheer muscle failure in my quads. I rubbed them out, massaged them limped a bit, walked a bit, and then after like a half a mile walking, I started jogging a little bit more, but then it happened again, so then I walked again. And I kind of had this on and off thing for two or three miles. Uh, and then the last mile or so, I managed to jog and then run through the finish. Uh, Cause like at that point I was just like, no, I'm not gonna like not run the last mile. And I've made it this far. Um, so I was really upset that I had to stop cause really I wanted to finish, my goal was to finish the whole thing without stopping. Uh, my other goal was to finish at four hours or below. I ended up finishing with a 4.16, um, and I had to stop at mile 22 because of the muscle failure. Now, definitely think that's contributed to going out too quickly. I've seen this happen. It looks like a lot of YouTubers like Seth James Demore, Kafuzi. I'm not anywhere near as fast as them, but he seem to have the same problems that we are going, like people uh, just, you go out too quickly. I think another problem with me is in my training, I never did 22 mile long runs or even 20 mile long runs. That's the longest I ever ran. Uh, within my training, I only ran up to 15 miles at a time. So that was a big thing. Yeah, it took as a learning experience, honestly. I wasn't upset uh, because at the end of the day, I did finish a marathon. It was my first one. So I just took it as like a, hey, this is a step in the right direction. And I, like I actually did it. You know, I didn't let the, the muscle pain get to me enough to quit or anything. I pushed through it and I finished. Uh, but, you know, I definitely took a look at my training thing was like, you know, I did a lot of tempo runs, I did a lot of speed work, I did a lot of mile and a half or two mile runs or whatever, but I didn't do like the super, super long runs, like the 22 miles, the 20 miles, whatever. Uh, I didn't go anywhere near that, that range. I didn't go anywhere near that range and I think that's exactly what my problem is and I know that next time in my training block, I'm gonna definitely tackle that and hit those longer runs and I think that'll build a better endurance so that I can keep that speed up for longer and actually make it to the finish line instead of having muscle failure because I wasn't conditioned enough. That's basically how it went down. Just quick, short, sweet, hard to beat. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe if you've ran a marathon recently, let me know how you did and how you feel about it and some things that you were able to take and learn from it um, down in the comments below. So anyway, take it easy guys, stay natty, Team Natty out.